Here are five rules that you're probably getting wrong when you're playing Fallout Wasteland Warfare, whether you're just starting out learning the game or whether you've been playing since launch. There's a good chance that you're getting at least two of these wrong, but don't worry. I'm going to explain how they should be played so that you don't make the same mistake in your next game. One big rule you may be getting wrong is activation. You see, in a lot of miniature war games, activation works as an I go, you go style system, and Wasteland Warfare has that with some caveats. In this game, there are two stages to activation, readying up and then activating. When you ready a model, you place one of these little tokens beside it, and what most of us do is say, right, I've readied this model, I'm now going to activate it, and off we go. But you don't have to. You see, according to the rules, when you place one of these ready up tokens, you then have the opportunity to activate all readied models or none of them. And when I first started playing Mason Warfare, this really confused me. Like, why would you not activate a model you just readied? That's because you can use this system to do some really cool things like carrying out ambushes or waiting out an opponent. An example of this is say your opponent is charging a behemoth towards you. On your turn, you could have readied your models but didn't shoot. Then, when the behemoth is in range, you can ready up your next model and activate all of them, smothering the behemoth in a shower of bullets. So remember, just because you readied a model doesn't mean you have to then activate them that turn. You can feel free to use this to try different strategies in your next game. By the way, if you are new to learning how to play this game and you'd love some extra help in understanding the rules, I've got a little playlist right here uh, that'll go through everything from setting up the game to learning how to play it solo. But next, let's talk about armor reduction. We all hate to see it, let's be honest, but every character has their own armor rating which indicates the base number of damage they can withstand. When your opponent is rolling their attack dice, they may get a result that has these broken helmet icons on them. This means that the armor of the target is reduced by the number of these icons that are on the dice. So if your opponent has three armor and you roll one of these, they now have two armor, etc. So there are two rules you're likely getting wrong when it comes to armor. Firstly, when we are calculating how much damage our armor protects us against, we look at our armor rating, let's say it's three, and then roll the armor dice. If you roll a number equal or lesser to your armor rating, you'll block that armor, roll higher, and you don't block anything. The first rule you're likely getting wrong is that if your opponent reduces your armor by one, your armor rating isn't three anymore, it's two. So you've got to roll two or lower in order to block that damage. What I've done in the past is assumed, ah, oh, well, I've got an armor rating of three, you reduced it by one, but I've still got to get three or lower. That's not the case at all. The other rule regarding armor that you're likely getting wrong is strong armor. Now, some characters, especially if they're wearing power armor, will have strong armor, and it'll look like a plus number beside your armor rating. If your opponent rolls armor reduction, that number is not affected by them whatsoever. So, for example, if I have three armor plus one, and my opponent rolls four armor reduction icons, it'll only affect my base armor stat, that three number. The plus one will be protected in that instance. Now, because your base armor has been reduced to zero, you won't really need to roll the armor dice because you can't roll zero or less. You'll just stop one point of damage because of the plus one on your strong armor. Equally as a bonus thing you're probably getting wrong on this, that plus one isn't counted towards your overall armor rating when you're rolling the armor dice. So if it was a base armor of three plus one with strong armor, you don't have four armor. You have three armor that you will roll the dice for, and when that's resolved, you'll stop one extra point of damage. Just like you know. Line of sight is equally a rule you're probably getting wrong too, because I know I did when I started playing the game. You see, in a lot of games, to determine line of sight, you would draw a line from the center of one model to the center of the other model, where line of sight is very direct and kind of like that scene in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. But in Wasteland Warfare, this isn't how line of sight works. In this game, if you can draw a straight line from any part of your model to any part of the target model's base or any part of their model at all without anything obstructing it, then you have line of sight. So remember, you don't need eye contact with a model to see it, you just need to be able to draw a straight line to some part of the mini. So those are five rules you're likely getting wrong in Fallout Wasteland Warfare, but if you'd like to know more of the basics of this game, this video right here will walk you through everything from setup to the dice and more. So why not check it out next?